Greetings, greetings, greetings. How are you doing, Mark? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Please excuse the mask. I'll take it off. Uh, the reason okay. I had it on is I didn't want to put it on camera. And it ended up becoming a bandana. <laughs> but let's not, let's not joke about that. These things happen. These things happen. Yeah, absolutely. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you doing up there? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Uh, How are the kids? How are the kids? Kids are doing well. The kids are doing well. They're growing. Um, you still haven't met one of them, but you'll meet them soon. Yes. Once everything Absolutely. opens up, yes. once the streets are open again, once the airports are open, we'll definitely make that happen. Okay. I will. I will definitely. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the the new one. No, no. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And I think first and foremost, welcome to you. Um, this is the first time that we have a video call ever. Um, just to make the, the record clear and um, I appreciate your, your time. I know you are a busy family man and whatever else that you're doing at this point in time. But thank you very much for your time. But, um, she didn't pass away, she didn't die, she committed suicide in the year 2000. It was late morning, late morning. Um, I was minding my own business. This would have been in, 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 in Pretoria, now known as Tuane. Minding my own business and one of the staff members came running in frank frantically um, to get my attention. Please come with me. Um, there's something going on that we, we need you to, to help us. Like, okay, cool, what's the story? I follow the lady, I'm not going to mention the name. <laughs> and, um, you know, I get to, to your room, your, your, your bedroom, and you, obviously you, you, were not, you were not there. Um, I'm not sure if I recollect you were, you were in the country, but possibly not in the, in the province. I, I, I don't remember that particular detail. So they bring me to the room and they say, look, just brace yourself. There's something that's going on here. Uh, we, we're not sure what the situation is, but we need you to come in and, and assist us. So when I get into the room, and then when I look to the right, uh, mom was laying on the bed. Um, she wasn't responsive, she was non-responsive, um, frothing at, 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 at the mouth. And you know, I don't think people were aware of what was going on. She wasn't speaking. Um, and you know we're trying to understand what you know what's what's going on until my attention was brought to a, a note that was in the dressing room with all the, the dressing room the was a walk-in closet <laughs> I'm trying to, to 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 read the note which which I do and the contents of it um, you know other contents of it um, some of it did make um, some some newspapers um, how, I don't know, but that's, that's what happened. Uh, I walk into the room, I've still got the note in my hand and everything, all of this happened maybe within a period of seven to 10 minutes. And paramedics arrived um, and before we all assisted in, in getting a, a mom onto the, um, the stretcher um, and onto the ventilators and everything. The, um, at that time, I'm not sure what the position was. I, I may be wrong. Um, I stand to be corrected, but Reverend Frank Chikane walked in. Um, I'm not sure if you'd remember that. He, he must have been Minister in the Presidency. I'm not sure. I will need to be correct at the. He was, he was a DG. DG in the Presidency. Yeah. Yes, DG in the Presidency. So he, he, he walked in and um, obviously he's known to, to the families. He's had a, a long history with the family. I remember he, he grabbed my shoulder and like, yo, chill, you'll be fine. We're dealing with the situation. I'm confused as any youngster would be. And I remember he took the note and we almost had a little arm wrestle match for, for, for the note. Uh, <laughs> the last time I saw that note was when he took it from, from my hands. Um, and then from there, the uh, mom was moved out, stretcher, ambulance, and that was basically the last time I'd seen her um, before she, she passed away. So I'm just, I'm just giving you this recollection. This is um, something that, you know, till today feels like it was yesterday. 
um, it's traumatic. You know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's a traumatic experience for anyone i guess and over time we all deal with things differently i've got a one way of de- dealing with things others have got a, a different way but you know it's it's dealt with in 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 its entirety but you know we keep it in the in the back of our minds and we we'll, we'll miss her um, wherever she is um i'm sure she's resting in, in peace so i just wanted to 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 convey that experience from my side which i've never um conveyed to you. and my experience with that situation and how it unfolded from then until now we're cool we're in a good place um we 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 or i let me speak for myself i've dealt with the tragedy um and that's that's just all i wanted to relate from from that loss in 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 my life and perhaps it's important to do so uh, i remember you in particular because you uh you just switched off you were not talking uh, i knew that this was uh, in you uh i think your brother said was a little bigger than you are and he was also uh, affected very deeply uh, yes. because <laughs> i realized a home without a mother the men can't leave there absolutely it's a difficult one. i just wanted to mention that which made me feel the gap and the realization that look the mother is important in the home it's one of the biggest blows were well. um, here was a young man uh, actually growing very bright really with a big future but he had to die he had a an ailment that you can control until you are very old <clears throat> but he passed away very suddenly some of the, <clears throat> the blows that i stomach uh, are the blows that are the, the result of my participation in the struggle at times i say uh, i can't blame myself because i took a decision to, to fight for my country and therefore are some of the things have come as a result of that um now that i know what took him is what pains me even more because i now know that it were people who were trying to kill me or to reach me but who were finding it difficult to reach me who then took a decision to create or make something that will pain me and i now know and i think it's important that <clears throat> maybe i become emotional on this one because if i had to take your life as well it was a failure to take your life that then they went to the young man and in a, in a manner that uh, very cruel because they interfered with his treatment in yes. order to poison him, yes. they went through his treatment <clears throat> and and indeed found him. now i know so the pain has not just doubled has tripled in me that here i lose for the first time my child who had many years to leave but it was in the place of me that they could not get me so it is a very painful thing hmm it gets to a point where now we almost lose you so from vusi's 
So after Vusi is um, passing away, I think the next emotional um, event that we had in our lives was we've lost these people, um, and it's just the circumstances were, and as you've explained, the, the, the Vusi one, when it comes to light, is it just <laughs> adds a whole level of of um, of of just trauma and, and, and upsetness, but that's a conversation for another day. Mm. It gets to a point where now we almost lose you. So here we are, we're faced with the loss of one of our mothers, the loss of um, one of our brothers. Now we face the loss of our, <laughs> our only father. <laughs> so. I'm going to talk through the events as well because that's the only thing that I can do is how I fit into it and the view from 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 my my experience of it. Leading up to a time where we'd understood that something was going on, um, your health was deteriorating, and you'd know it better because you were experiencing. It. And the usual thing that you do, you carry on with life as if nothing's wrong, and you deal with your your trauma and your um, your challenges in your corner because you're the kind of person that doesn't like making your problem in your own spot, which is something that, um, which is an approach that I've I've developed, and that's the the angle that I use in dealing with, with my issues and challenges. There was a time, if 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 you may correct me, you were one. It was at an NEC meeting that you had to leave abruptly because you couldn't continue. Um, if if my 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 memory serves me right, the actual speech that you were giving, the, the presentation that you were giving, had to be finished off, had to be completed by one of the other top six members because you couldn't. You tried to, but you couldn't stay on your feet. That's how bad it was. And I think that's the first time people realized, from a public perspective, hey, we've been hearing that this guy is not okay, but what is this that we see? And you're someone that generally does not show chinks in your armor. So for the first time, people saw you, what, well, what I believe people would, see, would have seen you um, in a, at, a, at a weaker footing. And then leading from there, it was the inauguration where you had to get inaugurated. Uh, and we were all sitting in, the, in, in one of the meeting rooms at the, at the house when your staff members, uh, some of your advisors, your personal aides were saying, look, you can't, you can't go, you can't do this because you're not in the position to do so. Your medical staff, more specifically, the doctors were saying, postpone it, um, this this can't happen. And this was on the morning of of, of the inauguration where you decided, look, I'm, I'm carrying on with my duties. Whatever happens, happens. We'll deal with it as, as we get there. You overcome that, um, barely. <laughs> Because we could see that you were in a weekend state. You were sitting in that room and you were being attended to. And I was even like, oh, this is this is real. <laughs> so that's a, the, 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 those are the events leading up to the time where we'd realized that you'd been poisoned. Or we'd suspected that you'd been poisoned because your health deteriorated very quickly after. That. Um, there was all sorts of ways that your body was responding um, or was behaving. Um, out of your control. Um, and I'm not gonna get into to the details of it. So fast forward, we embark on a journey to 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 resolve the issue. And this leads us to to Moscow, to, to Russia. That's a trip that um, I I accompanied you on. And just purely from you know they've it was traumatic for everybody. Not not everyone could um, could travel with you at that point, and I made it my 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 duty. So we traveled to 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 to, to Russia to deal with the issues, and you know there was an excellent medical staff that treated you. I mean, the results speak for for themselves. Um, you survived, um, which was definitely a, 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 an attempt on, on on your life. It was publicized, but it was brushed under the carpet. And I'm and I'm raising this because. You're my father at the end of the day. To some people, you're a politician. To some people, you're an enemy. To some people, you are um, 
the means to an end as as a political figure to others you loved to some you 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 hate to me you're my father so that that is that is the engagement that i that i that i have with you um in many occasions including this one that we're having now we all saw you at a at your weakest that we've ever seen you in your life um myself more especially because i traveled with you and i was there when you were undertaking the 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 medical treatment what was going through your mind at that time leading up to 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 uh, being able to to get the treatment and during and after what 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 went through your mind <clears throat> well uh that was one of the i think the toughest uh <laughs> challenges that i've faced when i was present uh, firstly uh <clears throat> i was uh, at that time i was already having i mean having got some information that I was present how I was present but at the time i think i was faced with the issue of uh, trying to battle to survive uh the attack that was made which was very heavy uh <clears throat> I, i i generally i don't get sick uh, that is the flu or whatever but that time i was indeed sick and i could feel and and and, and one day <clears throat> i could explain in detail how was i feeling but it was very different yes when we then uh, uh, i <clears throat> at that time uh contacted my friend in a country that we went to to say i'm sick because i knew that uh, the 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 poison was not just like a root that was dark and what to call it and made it to be a poison yes. but it was actually a very sophisticated kind of poison and i knew that my friend <clears throat> uh who was a president at that time in his country would be the only one in the country that will assist me and that's why i sent a message to him uh he sent doctors <clears throat> which was very quiet to see me who then recommended that indeed i should go to a place where we finally went with you and i knew once i went there this would be defeated and it was defeated and they finally find out but found out that uh, it was poison there were three types of different poisons that were <clears throat> were put to me together not just just one one type there were actually three very dangerous when i looked at them and what they do to the to the human body <clears throat> i did not believe that i survived that one, but i did and i must thank you also uh, because you represented uh, your sibling by going with me uh, to <clears throat> the country and you were there all the time and we came together um this <clears throat> is 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 a story among stories and i'm sure many and some of the cadres and leaders of the world have died without having an opportunity to tell their story the reason why uh i had to be killed up to this time has not stopped is partly because of the work i've done in the struggle that was given by the ANC as my organization that I performed to the best of my ability as a cadre a secondly is because of my beliefs politically about how the countries or our country should be i joined the struggle when i was very young to liberate south africa and i meant it um 
it was not just to do <clears throat> that for the sake of doing it. It was literally to liberate the country. And I believe and I still believe. And because of my ideology and beliefs and the work I did combined, yes. that my enemies thought I should die and they would have killed that, like they've killed many and they've poisoned many. I always say my ancestors have been with me and my God has been with me that I'm still alive. I was supposed to have died. I now also know that I was not just poisoned once. Each time the enemy thought I was looking better, they put another dose. In fact, <clears throat> when I write my book, I would say exactly how many doses were, were given because as an intelligent operator, I now know how many doses were put. How I did not die, even the doctors who <clears throat> cured me, they can't believe. I remember. If you take the, the dose the dose that I had in my body, it, no human being could live. If, 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 I, if, I, if I recall correctly, um, what they said is the set dose and what would normally get rid of someone, you said um, it was four times the amount that they'd given. Exactly. To find out, only to find out that it, it, the, the, the suspicion was he'd been poisoned. I get a phone call saying, can you please help? And I'm saying, okay. And this is a serious phone call from, from, from um, serious people. Help in what sense? You know, if we can, we will. If we can't, we'll let you know. Look, sorry, not going to happen. There's a problem, and this had to do, at that time, he was the premier of Mpumalang. Um, he's now the deputy president, um, president uh, deputy president Mabuzo. And the call wasn't from him, just to, to be clear. The call and the request was the premier at that time of Mpumalanga was not doing well, health-wise. You have to help. I said, yeah, but okay. Help in, in what way? I'm more than happy to help. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but whatever other way I can help, I'll help. So the story centers around a period where he was not feeling well. Um, this is what we later discovered, and he disappeared from public life. Um, it was basically to get him to people that can help him as soon as possible. And I said, okay, fine. Mm. Let's do it. You know, whatever it is that I can do, what do you need from me? Look, what we'll need from you is an airlifting from, uh, from um, Nelspreet and passage on a private plane because this thing needs to be kept as quiet, as clandestine as possible through to Moscow so he can seek medical, further medical treatment in, in Moscow. I said, okay, that's odd. What's the problem? To find out, only to find out that it, it, the, the, the suspicion was he'd been poisoned. I said, okay, fine. Um, give me a few moments. Let me, let me see what, what plan can happen. He said, look, when you get back to us, it needs to be a positive plan because we've exhausted all possibilities. We've asked every pl private player that we know, and we've asked every public player, so um, government institutions, ministries, whoever it is that they spoke to. And... They are not able to help us because it is a bit of a hot potato issue. And I was like, okay, extra pressure, but let me see what I can do. So You've disappeared a little bit. I, I, are you You've disappeared are you a little bit? Are you there, sir? Yeah, we are there now. Dead, okay. <clears throat> so you, you ended up when we were saying uh, all other uh, players have failed yes. to to ask. Yes. Yeah. yeah. These players were were, were, were government institutions, ministries, um, as well as as well as private players, who had the means to 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 fulfill such a, 
um, such an exercise. Anyways, we agreed to do it. Now I say, okay, fine. There's a team in place. It'll be done. This is my guarantee. Wherever he's going to, we'll get him there. So there was no option but myself at the time. And you know, I felt pressured because it is <laughs> it's a very it was a very high level extraction, if I may use that term, um, which we had to to do. And you know, it was it was in line with 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 saving life. You know, that's it's something that if I was in that position, I would have hoped that someone would, would go out on a limb to, to, to help me out if I had nowhere else to go. So anyways, make the, the, the necessary arrangements. And now uh, Premier Mabuza could not travel by road from Nelspruit to Johannesburg because that's the only way that we, we could get out. We had to airlift him via, um, by helicopter. Now the, the, the further issue is there was there was obviously a threat in his life because he'd been poisoned. Um, this, this, this information hadn't been out in the public domain. So we'd arranged for an, um, an helicopter extraction from a, I think a high school that was just outside of Nelspruit. So it's not too obvious because we had to send in our own um, modes of transportation, in this case, the helicopter. And it would be obvious if there was a, a landing and a, and a, and a and an extraction at that point. So we get the team to go and do it. They airlift him from, I don't know the name of the high school I was in there because I was waiting at um, uh, or tumble. Extraction happens. So now this is, if I recall correctly, yeah, a few moments later, he gets airlifted. He's on his way to OR Tambo. Now it's a storm is brewing. Literally, there's a storm, it's serious clouds. There's always heavy cloud cover around the Kempton Park, um, Boxburg area. So, anyways, it was it was quite a quite a strong electrical storm. And the reason I'm mentioning that is the helicopter did not make it to 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 OR, to OR Tambo like it was supposed to. It landed somewhere outside of of Kempton Park. I'm not sure. I wasn't on on the helicopter. And when we got the phone call that they wouldn't be able to fly through the electrical storm, the, the electric storm, sorry, which sent um, drivers out to go uh, to, to pick up the premier. So they picked him up, they get to the airport. This is now, we are waiting, well, I'm waiting at um, Fireblade, the now infamous Fireblade private passenger terminal that's attached to, to, to the international airport. I'm sitting in the plane. He arrives, we welcome him because now it's, it's raining. And when I'm saying we, it's, there's, there's pilots and, and, and um, one or two other people that I traveled with at the time. We literally had to carry him into, into the plane. Um, and for me, I was, <laughs> I was shocked at what I saw. I didn't expect to see what I'd seen. Um, walking stick and he, he could barely walk um, on, his, on his own. Carried him, took him to, to the back of the plane where we, we set him upright. And at this point, we're like, okay, we've got wheels up at this particular time. Let's get ready to move. Now I can see the panic ensuing from the captains, the, the, the pilots of the plane. And eventually they come to me and then they're like, look, we're not sure what's going on, but is this gentleman okay? Um, I say, no, he's fine. And they're like, we obviously, because of the passenger manifest in his, in his passport, we obviously know he is. So this is a very high profile trip, but he's not looking well. Is there a problem? And I'd say to the pilots, no, this gentleman is here. We need to get him out. We are on our way to Russia to deal with this problem. So that's not up for discussion. And I could see the, 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 the discomfort in, in, in the pilot's face, but it's like, okay. Let's see what we can we can do about this. So as we're sitting in the plane, the storm gets worse. We start up the engines to take off. We have technical problems, <laughs> and uh, technical mm -hmm. problems. The technical problem at that time was with one of the engines, and we needed to get a team to come check it out. So I'm like, okay, this is now starting to get very tricky. So as they're checking the 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 
uh, the engine out. We sat and we actually ended up having dinner on the plane. You know, we didn't even take off because, you know, we've been sitting, Yo. waiting and, you know, we're all hungry and we're eating. No, yes. during that, yeah, during, during that period, I'm having a discussion. Obviously, I'm, I'm trying to find out what's going on. And he wasn't in a good state. You know, he could hardly speak. But he managed to, to, to utter a few words. And he looked at me and he said, I didn't know who had made this plan. I didn't expect to see you, meaning myself. But now that I see it's you, I feel very comfortable and I'm happy. Because if you are attached to this exercise, then it means your father's attached to it. And I appreciate this, now this operation being made possible. And I said, no, this is, this is my story and you are in the safest hands you can be in at this point. And then he, 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 he relaxes a bit. Customs, uh, sorry, immigration um, officials come to the plane because now we've missed our departure time. They need to get certain documentation. And um, uh, you may not be aware, but at that time, I don't know what it is now, at Fireblade, they didn't have the, um, the capacity or they weren't granted the permission by the different institutions, departments, I'm assuming home affairs. Um, to, to stamp people's passports just from an immigration perspective. So we had to actually get off the plane that sent one of the buses to take the bus to the actual main uh, terminal building um, at Ohar Tambo. And we actually walked through. So now we, we, we're pushing him on a wheelchair. Now it's, it's, it's late. It's a bit late. So fortunately, it was, it was a bit quiet in the airport. And we managed to get a to cover his head a bit so he's not, he's not visible and people cannot see who he is. Otherwise, um, it would have created certain um, issues, in my view. So we get today, we clear customs um, and immigration. And on our way out, I still saw an old friend of mine. Um, his name is Mukhtar. <laughs> if he watches this and he, and, he, and he recollects that period, he'll now know who was in the wheelchair because he was looking at me like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> You know, there's no one else moving around here. Where are you guys going? I'm like, no, 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 just I'll speak to you later. We, we like to catch our flight. So we push them onto the plane, uh, onto the bus with his wheelchair. We get onto the plane. Um, and at that point, the pilots were like, okay, we've gotten clearance. Um, it's going to be wheels up in the next 10 minutes. We've got our slot to, to take off. And that's when we realize, okay, we're good to go. So at this point, why I'm mentioning the stories because it, it, you know there's a lot of risky stuff that people do, and the risk at that time that um, um, I'm sure you'll agree with is, and this was, I think, the issue that the pilots they never said anything, but to me at least, at least um, the issue that was 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 going to be very controversial is we have someone that's on an airplane that's not medically cleared to fly. Right. So if anything happens in between our point of departure and point of arrival, his death will be on my hands because I'm the go-to person when it comes to, 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 to this exercise. So if the premier had lost his life, me being the last person in contact with him and, and the premier being in my kit, the buck would have stopped with me and I'd have to face the consequences as I understand it. And I think that's, that's what the, 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 the captain was alluding to. And at that point, that was irrelevant. It was immaterial. We were continuing with this plan. So as we were sitting on the plane, just having discussions, and I was trying to understand but what is going on. And he said, look, um, my son, I believe that they've got to me. I've been poisoned. I've been in hospital. I believe at that time it was almost three months and three months that he hadn't been seen in public. And he was just saying, I've been poisoned and I'm upset that this has happened. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, but why would this happen? And why to you? And, you know, what am I doing here? And he said, no, he has come to see the reality of life where people that you trust and people that you've worked with do not want to have you around. Because he recollected a story where he said he was laying in his hospital bed. Now at this point, he's 
whatever he had it was on a drip and ventilators i don't know whatever whatever the situation was in the hospital and he was in a not a fully comatose state but he said he was he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't active he wasn't um you know he didn't have any activity he didn't have any movement in his body and in his speech but what he said is as he was laying and sleeping because he was laying there with his eyes closed even when he was awake at times just what else was he supposed to do and as people came to visit him his trusted people they were speaking and this was this is where it struck me like we have a, a big problem here. he was speaking and the people that were speaking that were trusted to him were basically saying were basically speaking about their plans post his death so now they're planning for his eventual death um, and he said he didn't see them but he, obviously he knew his vo- their voices and he could remember their voices and you know the next thing that he said is like and I can't blame him for it he said if and when i come out of this i'm going to find these people and they're going to pay for this whatever that means so anyways i'm like look i can't argue with that i would have been just as upset as as he was and i would have probably said the exact same thing uh, because you know people are infringing on 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 his life so anyways we take off we get to moscow um fortunately he he survived the flight we prepared the bed for him he had a, a good rest in the in the cabin in the back and we went to to the other room and we left him there occasionally have something to eat something to drink um but for the most time he was just in his own zone and and comfortable enough that he was in safe hands so we land in in moscow and then immediately from the airport was a medical team and we went to to the hospital and now i'm thinking to myself now i'm there for the second time the first time was with you <laughs> for the exact same reason and now the second time i'm there with um, the former premier the current deputy president and going through the same rigmarole going through the same processes and 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 um procedures of um the protocols that come with with the medical treatment and you know it, it, was, it was very odd because i was very, i was i was his, i was his mind i was pushing him everywhere um, i'm the one that had to carry him um yes with the help of other staff but you know getting him his 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 shoes removing his shoes um sometimes having to 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 undress him he was not in a in a great state i'm just mentioning these details because i think you know you need to understand and people need to understand that it was really really touch and go just like it was for you it was touch and go for for the the now deputy president and the whole time you know he was he was obviously thankful to 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 myself and to yourself um, for whatever reason and I, and I said no it's not the time for that as long as we fulfill our 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 given mandate i stayed with him for about 5 days maybe 6 and his medical program was going to continue over um a few weeks but the whole time after he done his test and he felt like the worst was over um after a few days he obviously wanted to get back to 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 south africa um to continue where he left off people were expecting because not the whole the duration of the trip from when it left up until we got back no one uh, i'm not saying no one but the the, the 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 only a very few people knew but the general person did not know where he was and i think that's that's exactly how it it, it played out and that was the whole idea of of it happening so um they they did all the blood tests drained blood they did all these things and you know watching watching it is quite it's quite a scary scenario I mean, some of the, the the equipment and machinery that was put on and then how you responded to some of it how he responded to some of it it's, it's a scary thing to to see you know um and how he was detailing it and the pain that he was in um you know the poison affects people in different ways but this one was a slow poison that was you know was killing him from the inside um through his his core and somehow it was affecting his his legs so that was what the mobility um problem was so i leave moscow back to south africa um i think it was five or six days in uh because i needed to get back to to doing what i uh, i was doing at the time 
and the agreement was when he's ready to come back, it will be the same extraction arrangement, pick up and, and, and drop off. So that's what we do. This time around, um, and you know, it's, it's going to be controversial what I'm saying to some people, but this is, this is a fact. And it's, it's public knowledge as a manifest, so it's not like I'm trying to, to, to get stuff that's not out there. So it's a long flight to, to Moscow, and you know, I'm literally flying alone this time around. So I invited um, one of my business partners, um, Mr. Tony Gupta. And I said, look, I'm going back to Russia. I need company. Are you coming? And he's like, look, if there's anything I can do, I'm more than happy to do it. You're my brother. I'm coming with you. I'm going to support you and, and do whatever needs to be done. Let's go. So off we go. So this time around, I've got company. Um, that is not relevant to, to the core team we had at the time. We get to Russia. We spend a night. I think it was in one, one evening, two maybe, but we're not there for longer than, than, than two days. And that's when we receive him and put him back, uh, the premier back on the plane, and we make our way back to South Africa. Now, when we get back to South Africa, there's all, the, 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 the alerts are still out. Like, look, this thing is very quiet. He needs to lay low for two reasons. One, obviously, people cannot know where he is from a publicity, um, for publicity's sake. Um, and two, there's still people that put him in that position that need to be identified and he needs to be um, protected in that way. So from the day we arrived back in South Africa for it's up to a week, it's a few days, um, you're looking at your watch like you got to go somewhere. Too. Oh, I'm just joking. Yes. No, yes. no that, was a, that was a joke. So um, he spent... <laughs> He spent a few days at um, one of the guest, house, the guest houses in, in Saxon Hall um, that you know, he was well looked after and his safety was there. He was there with his wife, so he was in good, in good hands. Um, I'm mentioning this story because he's someone that is, you know, was, was, was dear to a lot of us um, and still is. And I'm speaking from my perspective because that sort of event that happened um, was, was a very, it was a very serious event, you know. Um, there's been a breakdown in, 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 in my relationship with, with, with him and not from my side, from his side. My understanding of it, I, I clearly don't know. Maybe one day we'll, myself and him will have that, that discussion because he's someone that I've always held in high regards. Um, and, you know, I'm not asking him for any favors, I've never asked him for anything, you know. I was part of a team that saved his life. Um, I'm not looking for preferential treatment, but I used to speak to him from time to time to check how he's doing post the, the, um, uh, the operation that we embarked on. And I'm trying to think if I'd seen him after that or not. I'm not sure that I'd, that I'd seen him, but we were on telephonic um, uh, interaction and communication. And then from nowhere, it just stopped. And I realized, you know, there's, there's clearly, clearly a problem. I'm not sure what the problem is, but one day we, we definitely will find out. So that's just my recollection of, of one of the stories that I haven't shared. And I just wanted to share that because I think it's important to do so. How I survived, and I say uh, it was a miracle. One it of those poisons, one yeah. of those poisons was not Durban poison, you know, the marijuana. <laughs> no, no, you don't smoke. That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. 